tracks. Must be a real big one. Looks like he's heading up for the rocks above the old lumber road. Hey, you see what I see? If he gets in that brush, we've lost him for sure. Look, I'll circle around and try to cut him off. You keep on his trail. Right. You shot my little girl. You, you blinded her. It's all right, baby. I can't see, Mama. I can't. simple, the bullet ricocheted. Pa, I am to blame. It was my bullet that blinded her. Could have happened to anybody. Yeah, but it happened to me. Now, don't you worry, sweetheart. The doctor says there's a very good chance you'll see again. You mean that, Papa? You're not lying to me. Hey, he's not lying to you, sis. You're going to be just fine, but it's going to take a while. Oh, Papa, how are we going to manage? You can't afford to put me into a hospital. We're staying with the Cartwrights. They're going to foot all the bills. Can they afford it? From what I've seen of the size of their spread, they can afford almost anything. And they owe it to you. It's the least they can do for what they've taken away from you. And Joseph, will you settle down? You're acting as if it were your first day out instead of hers. I'm sorry, Pa. It's that I've been trying to see her ever since the accident. I just don't understand why her father won't let me go near her. Well, I think his concern is natural. I just want to tell her how sorry I am. I think you'll have your chance right now. Papa, I'm scared. Don't be afraid. We'll hold you. Come on. There it is. That's fine. Fine. Oh, good morning. Good morning. One more. Well. Well, good morning, good morning. How's our lovely young patient this morning? Who's that? I, I'm Ben Cartwright. Uh, she's feeling quite chipper. This is the first day without the bandages. It feels good to get out of that room for a change. I'm sure it does. Papa, could I maybe get a little fresh air? Sure. I, I was hoping she might like something like that. Who's that? It's, uh, 
It's a little Joe, Tessa. Look, I, I thought you might like a little ride. I've got the carriage outside. I got the horse all hitched it's up. It's wrong, car, right? You trying to ease out from under a guilty conscience? Lon, that's no way to talk. You shouldn't turn the back of your hand to a generous offer. If little Joe would like to take her for a ride, I think that would be nice if Tessa would enjoy it. Oh, well, I'd enjoy anything that would take me out into the fresh air for a while, Papa. Well, so we better get started then. There's an awful lot of the Ponderosa to see. <clears throat> what, Tessa? Uh, See you later, Papa. Enjoy yourself. Oh. We've been riding for quite a while. You want to get out and stretch your legs a bit? Oh, I'd like that. log over here. Would you like to sit down? Yes, I would. This way. Just... It's right, right oh. behind you. Yes, I found it. <sighs> One of my favorite spots. Come here and fish when I was a kid. It feels very pretty. Tell me what it looks like. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of trees around. Some pretty big trees. And uh, well, there's a slope over there with some cattle on it. Not very many of them. And. Uh, there's a little stream running by. There's a lot of birds and ducks. There's a blue jay in this tree right here. It sounds beautiful. Tessa, I'm so sorry. If I could give you my eyes, I would. It wasn't your fault. It was an accident. It was my fault that it happened. No, don't blame yourself. Let's talk about something else. I, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Tell me about yourself. Have you lived here all your life? Yeah, I was born here. I envy you. I've been on the move all my life. My pa doesn't seem to stay in one spot very long. What does your father do? Oh, a little bit of everything. Well, you might say that pa's been looking for that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Did he ever find it? Not yet. I suppose he will. He, he doesn't give up too easily. Oh, I'm starting to get a little cold. Oh. Yeah, we, we better be getting back then. I don't want to keep you out too long the first day. Okay. Yes, I'll cut that for you. Oh, thank you. You're getting too fast for me, little Joe. Doesn't a father have any prerogative in taking care of his daughter? It's my pleasure. Fine. Now, there's something that I've been wanting to say to all of you. You Cartwrights have been awfully good to us. I don't know what would have happened to us if you hadn't have taken us in. That was the least we could do. Tessa, the meat's on the left and vegetables are on the right. And if I've been short-tempered and mean these past few days, why, uh, 
It isn't because of what happened to Tessa there. It's... Well, we've had some plans, and those plans are pretty well gone now. What plans? A job out in California. Paid well, too, but I... I had to be there by a certain time, and the time's passed now. You sure it's too late now? Quite sure. That really isn't very important. What is important is the uh, young man that was waiting for Tessa. Met him out in Missouri about a year ago. He was on his way to California. He was going to make his fortune. Said he'd send for Tessa. And he did, a couple of months ago. Papa... Oh, it's true. The engagement is off, Tessa. It seems he uh, doesn't want to marry a blind woman. Comfortable? Pa? Pa, what was all that about down there? What do you mean? I mean, all those lies you were telling at dinner, all that talk about a job for you and a fiancé for me, I, I don't understand. Why were you lying like that? Well, now, were they really such terrible lies? Maybe one day there will be a job for me and a fiancé for you. Who knows? Papa, you're not trying to make the Cartwrights feel even more guilty, are you? To make them look after us even better than they do now? Guilty? Tessa, I, I, I'm doing this for you and Lon. Ever since you were little, I promised you that one day we'd have something. Well, that day has come. We've, we've found the end of the rainbow, and it, it has a name. Cartwright. Papa, the... They're good, decent people. You can't take advantage of them that way. No one's trying to take advantage of them. Aren't you forgetting that it was little Joe's bullet that blinded you? Whatever the, the Cartwrights are doing for us, they owe us. Papa, little Joe's a nice boy. I can't see him, but I can feel what he's going through. And it was an accident. Is uh, little Joe beginning to mean something to you? No. I just don't feel the need to hurt him anymore. No one wants to hurt him. And after all, we may be doing him some good. After all, knowing a wonderful girl like you shouldn't be a hardship on any man. Now, you try to get some rest, I'll... I'll lick in on you after a bit. Do you want to go for a walk or do you want to sit around here? Oh, I think I'd like to sit for a while. Okay. Come on right over here. Here, when you sit down, it's a rocker. Oh, thank you. Okay. I don't know what I'd do without my eyes. Oh. I like being your eyes, Tessa. Tessa, the fellow in California, the one you were engaged to, I suppose you loved him very much. Why do you ask? I don't know. You just... Strike me as the kind of girl who'd have to love a man very much to marry him. Yes, I'm that kind of girl. Have you been able to forget him at all? Isn't that the best way? I guess so. Tessa, suppose a man came along someday and, and asked you to marry him. How would you feel about it? Well, that would depend on why he wanted to marry me, Joe. Because of my blindness, he might mistake love for pity, and... 
Well, I just don't think that would be a very sound basis for marriage. No, I guess not. A woman has pride. She, she wants a man to love her for herself alone, not because he feels sorry for her. You talk as though you don't believe a man could love you just for yourself alone. I don't know. Would you take me in now? I'm, I'm getting kind of tired. If that's what you want. <laughs> you, you must read this. <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to talk to you. <laughs> you you've got to read this book, Joe. <laughs> hey, Pa, it's kind of important. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. So involved. Yeah. Well, uh, what would you say if uh, if I told you I was going to ask Tessa to marry me? Well, she said. She's a fine girl, Joseph. I think that any man would be proud to call her his wife. Good. What about, uh, what about Tessa? What does she feel? I, I think she cares for me a lot. Maybe as much as I care for her. Mm. Well, of course, you. Uh, there's quite a difference between caring for a person and, uh, and loving him. <laughs> oh, Pa, don't you see? It, it's a perfect answer for all of her problems. Now, who can take better care of her for the rest of her life than a husband? Joe. Joe, you make me feel real good. You have a sense of responsibility that's good. I, I don't want to make a martyr of yourself because of an unfortunate... Pa, there is no martyrdom involved. It would be a good marriage. An unfortunate accident, Joe. Her blindness is my problem. Now, Joe, you have a life of your own to live. Now, Pa, I want you to get used to the idea because I'm going to ask Tessa to marry me. Hi, Mr. Caldwell. Hello, Joe. Thought I'd come a little early, see if Tessa wanted to go for a ride. Well, she's already gone riding with her brother. Got me worried. They should have been back hours ago. Which trail they take? Well, they went off the North Ridge there. I'll find you. You're all right, just keep coming. Lord! Oh, honey, I'm sorry, I didn't mean for you to get hurt, but I can't watch you every minute. Okay, mount up. No! Tessa, we gotta get back to the ranch now. You can't walk all that way. No, Lon, I'm scared, I don't want to. Oh, come on, mount up. What, do you expect me to be your nursemaid the rest of your life? I'm your brother, not your husband. Ah! You ever hurt Tessa again, and I'll kill you. Tessa, are you all right? Oh, yes, Joe, I'm all right. You're the one blinded her. Now you take care of her. You know, one thing your brother said made sense. You need a husband to take care of you the way she'd be taken care of. Who'd want to marry a blind girl? I would if you'd have me. Tessa, I would if you'd have me.
Mr. Cartwright. Oh, yes, Tessa, here I am. Uh, could I speak to you for a moment, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, of course. Uh, why don't you sit down over here? There's the chair right behind you now. Uh, would you like some coffee? No, thank you. Mr. Cartwright. Yes, dear. Little Joe asked me to marry him today. Did he tell you? Yes, yes, he did tell me. He also told me that you... Uh, you refused to give him an answer. Why? Oh, Mr. Cartwright, if I could just look into little Joe's eyes right this minute, I... Well, if I could see that there was love there and not just pity and guilt, I'd say yes so fast it would make your head spin. He means so much? Oh, yes. But I can't see what's in his eyes. That's why I've come to you. You're his father, and you know him better than anyone else. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, please tell me what to do. Well, that's, uh... That's very difficult. I, I don't... I don't think anyone can... tell you what to do. But I think that... If two people love each other, I mean, truly, deeply love each other, well, then, then nothing else matters, does it? And not even, not even blindness. Because there's so many other things that they can share together. But how can I be sure? Where can I find the answer? In your heart, Tessa. In your heart. If I should say yes, if we should get married, you won't hate me. You won't think I'm marrying little Joe just because I need him. No, Tessa. I don't think you're that kind of girl. I don't think you're the kind of girl who'd marry anyone for selfish reasons. Papa? Over here. Papa, where's little Joe? Oh, they all had to go into town on business. They'll be right back. Say, you better hurry up and get some breakfast before it gets cold. I'll be right there. Help. Oh. All right? Yes. It should have helped you. Papa. Papa. I, I can see you. Are you sure? Yes. Mom, I can see everything. I can see the blue chair. And I can see the brown and green books and the guns and the, and the fireplace and, and the Indian rug and the, and the fruit on the boat. Bob, I can see again. Wonderful. Oh, Joe. Oh, Papa, this changes everything. I've got to tell little Joe. Tessa. Papa, I'm whole again. I'm the way he'd want me to be. Oh, Papa, I can't wait till he gets back. Tessa, are you sure this is the right way? Oh, Papa, he's got to know. He's got to know as soon as possible. Don't you see? He, he won't feel guilty anymore. And I'll be able to see what's in his eyes. Well, maybe it isn't all that easy. What are you getting at? Well, suppose that little Joe doesn't love you the way that you think that he'd ought. Suppose 
There is a small element of pity and, and, and guilt in the way he feels about you. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't some love, and I'm not saying that this love doesn't grow every day that you two are together, but has it grown strong enough? Maybe if you blurt out the truth now, why, this whole thing will be over. It'll be, it'll be finished. Papa, he loves me. And the fact that I can see again will only make him love me more. Of course. But why take unnecessary chances? Wait until after you're married and then tell him. And that way, no harm will come to anyone. Pa's right. What's so terrible about pretending you're blind a little longer? Of course, and, and, and women have been setting their caps for men down through the ages, and, and the intelligent thing to do is, uh, is to win the man first and then tell him the truth. Papa, it's because I love little Joe that I owe him the truth. Don't you understand? I can see again. I don't need to marry little Joe anymore unless he really loves me. And what about Lon and me? Don't you care what happens to us one little bit? Papa, you and Lon... Do you realize what's in store for us if we have to leave here now? No money, no jobs, nothing. Papa... Tessa, I'm 53 years old. All my life, I've been waiting for something good to happen to me. All my life, I've been tending to you and to Lon. Don't take this chance away from me. Don't... Don't take it away from all of us. Papa, what are you asking me to do? He's asking you not to turn on your own flesh and blood. I don't want to turn against you. Just tell me what you want me to do. I want you to play blind until after you're married to little Joe. Do it for me. Do it for Lon. You, you owe it to us. I can't do that. Tessie. Papa, I can't. It's our last chance to get that. anything. Oh, another thing. First thing tomorrow morning, we go up to the north section, see how many camps have been dropped. Tessa, what's the matter? You look upset. Tessa, what's wrong? Nothing's happened, little Joe. I guess I'm just tired of being blind. Take me upstairs, Papa. Tessa? Tessa, come on, what's the matter? You've been avoiding me the past few days. I don't know. Nothing's the matter. Come on, now, there is something the matter. You're just not the same girl anymore. I wish I knew what kind of girl I really am. I know what kind of girl you are. I asked you a question a week ago, and I'm still waiting for an answer. Joe, please. Tessa, I want to marry you. Oh, Joe, please. Tessa, I want to marry you. I want to marry you now, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Are you sure that's what you really want? Yes, I'm sure. It's what I want more than anything else in the world. So please say yes. All right. I'll marry you. Pa? Hey, Pa? He must be in the barn. I'll go get him. You be all right? Yeah, fine.
I, Pa, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Where's Tessa? I just left her here. She, she just went upstairs. Joe. Joseph, it's wonderful. Oh, she already told you about us getting married. Oh, no. Pa, I finally convinced her. Pa, I'm gonna fill her life with so much love that her blindness won't matter. I'll be her eyes for the rest of her life. Well, come on. Aren't you gonna congratulate me? Oh, of course. I... Of course. You don't look too happy about it. Well, she's a... She's a remarkable girl, Joseph. Of course she is. She couldn't be any more right for me, Pa. Joe, are you, are you sure? Are you absolutely sure about her? I know my own mind. Of course you do. I, I, I don't suppose you've set the date yet. No, the sooner the better. Just give us enough time to invite some friends and neighbors. Don't you think it might be an idea? After all, you don't know each other that well. Perhaps if you, if you waited a bit, we know each other well enough. Yes, but what do you what do you think of the idea? Maybe, maybe we should take her to San Francisco and have a have a doctor examine her eyes. Oh, uh, the... I'm I'm not kidding myself about her. She's blind, and I made her that way. I know, but they're always developing new techniques. I don't want to hurt her any more than I have already. I love her the way she is. Come on, Pa, don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Joseph, I... You're my son, and... I just want the best for you. The very best. And stop worrying. I think I got the best. I know I got the best, Pa. Hey, better go upstairs and see her. Hey, Paul. Little Joe find you? Hmm? Little Joe find you? Yes, he found me. He told you about the wedding, huh? Yes. Paul, you don't you don't seem very happy about it. You uh you ain't worried just because Tessa's blind, are you? Oh, she isn't blind. She what? I said she isn't blind. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. A little while ago when little Joe was looking for me, I went to the back way, and there she was in front of that mirror in the living room, primping. And then she ran up those stairs like the wind. She can see better than you or me. Oh, that, that only makes sense. I know it doesn't. What? You mean she's just been playing a game with us? I don't know. I just don't know. You gonna tell little Joe? Horse, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. I'll tell you something, I like that girl. I think she likes little Joe enough. Maybe she even loves little Joe enough to tell him the truth about herself before this goes much further. What if she don't? We're gonna have to give her that chance. Morning, Tessa. Good morning. Oh, the flowers, they... They smell beautiful. Yeah, the place is really getting gussied up. It's gonna look beautiful for the wedding. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just straightening things up a little bit. Joe, I have some good news for you. Oh, yeah? What's that? I think my eyesight is beginning to come back to me. It's just been in the last couple of days, I, but I, I can see a little bit of light. Now, but I had to be sure before I said anything to you. Tessa, can you see me? No, no not clearly, but, but I, I, I know I will. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. 
God you're going to see again. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, God. Now you won't have to feel guilty anymore. I mean... Now you... You don't have to marry me if you don't want to. What do you mean? Well, this is a perfect chance for you to back out. Oh, don't say that, Tessa. Please don't say that. I asked you to marry me and I meant it. Are you sure, Joe? Are you very sure? Of course I'm sure. Of course I am. Yes? May a future father-in-law come in? Certainly. Isn't she a dream, Mr. Cartwright? Well, she certainly is. You've done a beautiful job, Mrs. Partridge. Of course, you had a, a beautiful subject to work with. Oh. Oh, Mrs. Partridge, uh, may I have a moment alone with Tessa? Why, sure. Thank you. Well, I, uh, I know it's a uh, father's prerogative to have a few moments with his daughter at a time like this, but is it also a, a father-in-law's? <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, actually, I, I came to wish you everything well. And to tell you what a wonderful girl I think you really are. That's very kind of you, Mr. Cartwright. Do you think I deserve all that? Yes, I'm sure. You know, all through the years, I pray that when one of my sons was ready to marry, he'd choose a young woman who was worthy, who loved him deeply, and who knew that he loved her, and who'd always have his best interests at heart. And you think I'm that kind of girl? I know you are. Because you see, I think you love and respect little Joe enough so that You'd always do what's best for him. What's right for him. What's right for both of you. No matter what the cost. Bless you, Tessa. Mr. Cartwright? Yes. Nothing. It was nothing. Time like this? It's it's just my nerves, Papa. It's just my nerves. Well now, they're all waiting for you. You ready? Yes, I'm I'm ready. I'll get my bouquet, Papa.
Dearly beloved, we're gathered here together in the sight of God and the presence of this company to join this man and this woman in holy wedlock. Joseph Cartwright, to you take this woman, Tessa Caldwell, for your lawful wedded wife, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love, honor, and cherish her for as long as you both shall live? I do. Tessa Caldwell, do you take this man, Joseph Cartwright, for your lawful wedded husband, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love, honor, and obey him for as long as you both shall live? I can't, Papa. It's I just all right. can't. It's all right. I guess oh, I've known all along I was asking you to do the wrong thing. <laughs> So you can see. Joe, go away. So look at me. You can see. Yes, I've been able to for days. Well, then why didn't you tell me? My papa was afraid that you'd back out of the marriage if you knew. That's why he made up that story about the man who was waiting for me in California. Oh, don't you see, Joe? We've been using you, taking advantage of your guilt. You told me yesterday you were getting your sight back. Why didn't you tell me the whole truth then? Why did you wait till the ceremony? I guess because I didn't want to disappoint Papa. Mainly because I... I didn't want to face the truth about us. And what is the truth? That your feeling of love for me was really guilt. And that my feeling of love for you was really fear of, of being alone in the darkness. Well, then you, you don't love me, not really. Not enough for marriage, Joe. Neither of us do. Tessa, I have been so afraid to say anything. I, I didn't want to hurt you anymore. I know. That's why I had the courage to do what I did. You know, my pa was right about you. you you're a very remarkable girl. <laughs> and you caught right, sir. Remarkable family. I kind of hate to face the truth. Me too. Well, you see, better get on until the guests take and I'll go home. Yes. a friend of mine in San Francisco. Now, if you were to deliver this to him personally, I think he might be able to find a job for your father and your brother. You mean you're willing to help us after what we tried to do to you? Oh, Tessa. <laughs> your heart wasn't in it. 
Anyway, I told you, you're just not that kind of girl. Well, then you're on your way. Yep. No, I want to tell you something. You are the prettiest girl that I ever almost married. <laughs> and you're the handsomest man. Oh, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Well, Mr. Kyright, thank you for your many kindnesses, even though it didn't uh, turn out to be a pot of gold. <laughs> oh, Papa, any pots of gold from now on will be made by our own hands. That's a depressing thing to learn at my age, but we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Ben. Marcus, I'm glad everything turned out well. Thank you. Bye, Tessa. Bye, Tessa. Yeah. Bye. Bye.